You are listening to Four Point Stance, Women's Tackle Football Talk on Fox Sports 1340 WHAP and pretty soon on Yelfi Sports. I'm your host, Ashley Edmiston, and I apologize for not being on for the last two weeks. I just really didn't have any football news, but today I've got a bunch. Biggest news is uh, the International uh, Federation of American Football, IFAF, gave an update on the Women's World Games. We now know who is participating in this set of games. Um, obviously, it's being in British Columbia, so Canada's hosting, which means, generally, that means they have home field advantage, but that's unsure. But we have uh, pretty much the three medal winners are obviously in, so U.S. has won gold both times, Canada... Silver both times, and Finland has won bronze all both times. However, we have three new teams that are joining this set of games. We have Great Britain, Australia, and Mexico. Now, if you know how the past IFAF Women's World Championship games went, Germany, Spain, and Sweden were involved, and they are not in this year's games. So there's a little controversy going online with that right now. But other than Kind of what I know news-wise, not sure why we're still saying with the six-game format, but again, that's not my decision. It is what it is. Now, regarding the teams that are participating, we do actually have very interesting news in the fact that Gridiron Australia actually named Dr. Jen Welter as their head coach. This was actually announced a couple days ago. Um... She it was the first uh, woman to be a NFL coach. She was also the first woman to participate in a men's professional sport. She was actually a running back for the Texas Revolution. Uh, for that, were is in a indoor football league that primarily is in the Texas area, but still, she um, and she has been in the previous two. Game. She has golds out of the previous two. So that's kind of a big surprise because we don't know who's on Team USA, but if they are already got Dr. Welter as the head coach of Australia, then kind of safe to say she probably might not be on Team USA. be a little awkward otherwise. Um, so for IFAF information, that is kind of the latest I have. Looking through my notes, uh, I've noticed that I had a couple questions asking how women's football as a whole is kind of set up, and which obviously is a good question. I mean, there's many, many leagues around the country, but a lot of many leagues, if you could say, a lot of them that have folded and joined the others and so right now we have three actual solid le- leagues in the country. You have pretty much what is on the West Coast. West Coast and Midwest is the uh, Independent Women's Football League, IWFL. And their setup is pretty much Pacific, Central, and Atlantic with uh, building teams. So to kind of give you a quick rundown of who's in the IWFL, on the Pacific side, you have the Utah Falcons, Nevada Storm, Sacramento Sirens are back, Carson Bobcats, North Country Stars, which are actually located in California. You have the Phoenix Phantoms, and a new team called the Rogue Valley Elements, which is just out of Grants Pass, Oregon. And that's kind of a surprise, given the fact that the, the closest team to them is actually in another league in Medford, but we will see how that lasts, considering Oregon is not too keen on keeping teams, trust me, on this one. For the Central Conference, you have the Tulsa Threat, the Austin Yellow Jackets, the Houston Energy, Colorado Freeze, Iowa Crush, San Antonio Regulators, and the Albuquerque Avengers. Then for the Atlantic Conference, you get Carolina Queens, Knoxville Lightning, and Tampa Rain. According to the IWFL website, they still have Washington Prodigy marked on their website. However, I know they have changed leagues. Um, The only other information I have from them is they do have a possible expansion in Rhode Island, and then 
Corpus Christi, Texas has San Ant- the South Texas Lady Crushers. So, kind of keep an eye out on that. If you want to know more about the IWFL, you can go to www.iwflsports.com, and that gives that information. Now, for pretty much what, according to them, you have the United States Women's Football League, the USWFL. They are pretty much set up for the East Coast. And their teams, they even say it on their website, that they are, the markets are available throughout the eastern United States. So, you could argue that the IWFL is more of a, a western part of the country in the central, and the USWFL is the eastern part of the country. And on their website, which is USWFLsports.com, we look at their teams, and we have it set up where it's the Mid-Atlantic Division, Central Division, and Southwest Division. Mid-Atlantic Div- Division, you have Baltimore Burn, the Detroit Pride, Erie Illusion, Washington Prodigy, and the West Virginia Wildfire. I didn't even know about that team. Central Division, you have Clarksville Diamondbacks, the Fayetteville, Fayetteville Fierce, Southern Indiana Storm, and the Tri-Cities Thunder. For the Southwest Division, you have the Arkansas Extra, Houston Wildcats, New Orleans Crew, and the Texarkana Lions. So, what I'm betting is the IWFL and the USWFL are probably going to have, depending on what happens, at least in the future, either they're going to combine into a league, or we're going to start seeing out-of-league games between the two. Other than that, I'm not entirely sure. This league has kind of just popped up all of a sudden. They do have their website updated. For their schedules, that is good to know. So when it gets game time, I can actually give you updates on those games. Then we have the Grand League right now that consists of a lot of teams. A lot of teams. If they're not in the other two, they're obviously in the WFA, the Women's Football Alliance. And that website is WFAFootball.net. Now... Like I said, there's a lot of teams, a lot of teams, and they are split up in American Conference and National Conference, so obviously all over the place. There are a bit more East Coast teams than there are West Coast teams, but that really doesn't matter until it comes to playoffs, and that gets very interesting, very interesting to be nice about it, let's just say. And so pretty much, starting with the Pacific North Division, which was part of what I used to be. I actually have officially retired from football due to uh, kind of some medical reasons. And so now I can actually, like, truly focus on this. You have, in the Pacific North, you have the Everett Rain, the Portland Fighting Shockwave, the Seattle Majestics, Tacoma Trauma, and the Southern Oregon Lady Gates. Then we go Mountain West Division, and we have the Mile High Blaze, Utah Blitz, the La Cruces La Moreta, uh, the Utah Wildcats, and the Rocky Mountain Thundercats. Pacific South Division, we have the Central Cal War Angels, the Sin City Trojans, Pacific Warriors, San Diego Surge are back, the Ventura Wolf Pack, we have the Inland Empire Ravens, which actually used to be the West Coast Lightning, and the Kern City Crusaders, which is a new team. The Great Plains Division, we have Kansas City Titans, Minnesota Machines, St. Louis Slam, the Madison Blaze, Nebraska Stampede, and the Minnesota Vixen. Southwest Division, we have Austin Outlaws, the Dallas Elite, Houston Power. Make sure I didn't say them before. Yep, yeah, okay. The Arlington Impact, the Acandiana Z- Z- Zydeco. Apologies for butchering that. And the Arkansas Wildcats. Then we get into the National Conference. You have your Chicago Force, Indy Crash, West Michigan Mayhem, Detroit Dark Angels, Flint City Riveters. Now the Colonial Division seems, yeah, Colonial Division is the biggest. And I'll tell you right now, it's the biggest division out of all this. You have Boston Renegades, Richmond Black Widows, 
Philadelphia Phantoms, the DC Divas, the Keystone Assault, the Hampton Lady Gators, the Maine Mayhem, Baltimore Nighthawks, New England Nightmare, and the Connecticut Hawks. Then we get into the North Atlantic Division, which is New York Knockout, Montreal Blitz, and the New York Sharks. Central North Division is Pittsburgh Passion, Columbus Comets, Cleveland Fusion, and the Toledo Reign. North Atlantic is Atlanta Phoenix, Derby City Dynamite, South Carolina Smash, and the Cincinnati Sizzle. As well as the Miss City Misfits, Carolina Phoenix, and Huntsville Tigers. Oh, God, there's still more. The Franklin Nightmare and the Tennessee Train. Tennessee Train. It's like, wow, there's a lot of teams on here. Then the South Atlantic Division, you get the Daytona Wave Runners, Orlando Anarchy, Tampa Bay Inferno, Jacksonville Dixie Blues, North Florida Pumas, Central Florida Shrine, Shine, and the Miami Fury. And then there is another team that has been added to the WFA, which is the Santa Fe Dukes, and they actually are the direct rivals of La Cruces. So it'll be interesting to see how they get fit into the league. Because as I say this, more information comes out, more teams show up, more schedules are restructed. That's the one interesting thing about women's football is there's always changes. Always. So between the three leagues, that is pretty much the main teams that you'll hear about. I may have stuff come in here and there from other leagues as I find out about them. However, once season starts, I'm probably going to be giving you quick highlights of at least 45, 50 games. Just in the WFA alone, I know for a fact it's going to be at least 32 games a week. And that's assuming everybody plays, which there are a lot of bye weeks, obviously, but you can guarantee that just from one league alone is going to be up where, upwards to about 32 games a week to give you a rough estimate of how many teams are in the league. Now, some questions that have come up is regarding rules in the leagues. I know for a fact that the IWFL uses NFL rules with some NCAA modifications, like uh, one foot in bounds, the kicking rule over time, the WFA uses NCAA rules, and for the U.S. WFL, I'm not sure, but I'm probably going to say they use the NFL playbook or NFL rulebook as well with NCAA modifications and maybe an occasional high school modification. Um, that one I'm still looking into. If once I find that information out, I will definitely let people know. And a couple other questions I had were. Like, field size. Well, biggest thing is, for women's football, the teams tend to play on whatever field's available. Some teams have access to high-quality NFL practice facilities or really, really well-taken-care-of fields. Others do not. So, depending, it also depends on your refs. Many refs, if they actually know the rule book, will set it up on NCAA standards and will line it up. The ball will line up with the goalpost. Otherwise, the ball is always on the hash mark. Now, if you're in areas that you're not able to have access to college setup of hash marks, then, again, depending on your refs, will determine where the ball gets placed. Otherwise, Everything's the same. I mean, same helmets, same shoulder pads, same seven pocket girdle, some wear five with extra knee pads. The only difference between the men's side of it and the women's side is the women's side uses a smaller football. The IWFL uses a, uh, they used to, when I was actually in the league, used to have a Nike football that was specifically made for them. However, they don't use that anymore. They use a different brand. Um, the WFA uses Spalding. The USWFL uses Rydell. But they're all junior-sized footballs. I mean, the IWFL one, the old version of it was slimmer and a little easier to use, but it was still a junior-sized football. That's the only main difference between it all. Um, 
I know that when I was at the World Games, and even when we were doing Team USA tryouts, we were using a Nike football that was a junior size, but it was still a junior size. Um, kind of not really much to say from there, other than, see if I can find it. There was one little piece I wanted to say. I've... The biggest thing about women's football is we are all about trying to help each other. And Derby City has a player that is in desperate need. Um, she really wants to play. She wants to be part of the 2017 roster with Derby City Dynamite. However, she's going through a very hard time. Um, she's unfortunately homeless and staying in a shelter. And, or she was staying in the shelter, but now she's with teammates and friends. But she needs help playing. And the biggest thing is, with women's football, you don't want to turn anybody away. If they can't afford it, you find ways to help them. So, if you would actually like to help the Derby City Dynamite, you can go to derbycitydynamite.com. Click on the picture to donate and sponsor. That, if, that website should have more information on the Players GoFundMe page. And as I know more, I will uh, actually reach out to Derby City and see if I can find out more and kind of give all of you an update. But if you really do want to help, then go to www.derbycitydynamite.com and help her out. Um, pretty much that's all I've really got in the way of information. This is, again, another longer episode than I've done. Well, at least the, the last one wasn't too long. But... Um, my goal is to try to keep these weekly, especially once the season starts. Definitely going to be weekly because I have games i got to talk about. Um, and if you've got any questions, throw them up on uh, our Twitter. Throw it up on my Twitter. Um, you can even put it on Facebook. Just make sure you have the hashtag for the number four PT stance. And that, it'll get to me, and I will try my best to answer it. Otherwise... Kind of the plans for the next episode is hopefully I know who's in Team USA so I can give you a update and information on who's who and where they're from and what league they're in and kind of get us ready for the, the season, which starts in 40 days. And as you can probably hear, my parrot alarm clock is going off, so it's time for me to call it. So, you've been listening to Four Point Stance Women's Tackle Football Talk on Fox Sports 1340 WHAT. And pretty soon on Yelfi Sports. I'm working on getting that set up very soon. And keep tuning in wherever you're at and getting your latest information on women's tackle football news.